Frameworks like Next.js can do a lot for you, which means there's probably some features that you haven't used. In this video, I'm gonna be covering 10 Next.js tips that you might not know. First up, redirects. So after Next.js 9.5, redirects were added directly into the framework, allowing you to take an incoming request and output it to a different destination. So whether that's an internal path or an external path to some other website, you have support to do things like path matching or wildcard matching. For example, if you wanted to do an entire directory of blog posts. And an example of this would be for my website. If I go to lerob.io slash YouTube, this is actually going to redirect externally to my YouTube channel. Number two is rewrites. And these were also introduced in Next.js 9.5. They function similar to redirects, but they work as a proxy. So you specify some source and Next.js will take care of masking that and forwarding it to the destination. So for example, let's say that you're trying to incrementally adopt Next.js as part of your tech stack and you've rebuilt a new version of your documentation. Now, all these links on this page don't exist in your new application. So when I click on one of these links, I actually want to forward it to the existing site but I wanna mask the URL so that it looks like the user didn't actually leave the site. Number three is preview mode. So let's say you're working with a headless CMS or some external data source, and you wanna preview a draft of your content. Now, if you're working with static generation where the output of your website is just HTML files, this actually doesn't work very well. And preview mode solves that. So preview mode allows you to see a statically generated version of this draft content. For example, if we go over to this demo, we have a statically generated site and there's an edit button in the bottom right. And when I click this edit button, it allows me to edit any part of this page. And then when I save it, I'm gonna get this unique URL that's generated with preview mode. So now if I copy this URL and let's say I navigate here instead, we're seeing this statically generated version of our application in preview mode with our unique content. Number four is hooking into the build process. So I've pulled up some code for my personal site, lerob.io, which I'll link in the description below. It's open source. And when I'm running next build, I want to generate a sitemap for my site. Now by overriding next.config.js, we can customize our Webpack configuration and say when next build runs, I actually want to run this node script. So I have a simple node script here that generates out this sitemap, but this could be anything. It could be a sitemap script, RSS feed, indexing, a search with Algolia, anything. While we're here in next.config.js, we can talk about number five, which is using Preact. So you can actually swap out React with Preact very easily in Next.js. Now, the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is you only swap it out in the client production build. So by overriding Webpack, you can basically swap out and tell Next.js, hey, instead of looking at React, just use Preact instead. Now, why would you do this? In practice, if you're not using any of the advanced React features, Preact will help you ship less JavaScript to the client, which will in turn likely give you better performance. So it's something to experiment and test out with on your site. Note that as newer React features come out like concurrent mode and React server components, which I have a video on that I'll link below, these may or may not be compatible with Preact, so use this at your own risk. The sixth is absolute imports and module path aliases. So rather than having to have multiple levels of nested paths, so having import statements that might look like this, which can get kind of out of hand, you can use absolute imports and module path aliases to define where your folders are inside of either a jsconfig.json or a tsconfig such that inside of your components, you can now use this nice shorthand notation to import your files. Number seven is a CRUD API route. Now CRUD stands for create, read, update, delete, which are common methods that you can use when building APIs. And what you're looking at here is a Next.js API route, a single file that allows you to handle all of the different types of methods. So a put, a get, a post, and a delete. And what this might look like in practice is I have an API route here for views. And if I call this with a post, I want it to increment the views. But if I call it with a get, I actually want to fetch the view count. So if I look at this view counter component I have, 
you'll see I'm making a request here for a git, which has a different behavior than when I call it here with a post. The eighth is setting response HTTP headers for both API routes and serverless functions. So in this example, I'm pulling the response variable and I'm setting a cache control header for this API route. Now what this means is when I'm on my dashboard and I'm fetching these subscribers, you see I have a status of 304, which means it's not modified because this value has been cached. The ninth is an interesting trick which can be used in a couple different ways. So I'm just gonna show you an example. Let's say I have pages slash index.js and I want to specify maybe a title, a description, an image for my meta tags for open graph sharing on the web basically. I'm able to export this function home from my component and I can set different properties on that function. So maybe I want a title, maybe I want a description, et cetera. Now, when you're using underscore app.js, which allows you to share things between pages, there is this component prop, which is gonna give you access to that title. So you could use this to then create a shared layout for all your different components that have a dynamic title, a dynamic description, a dynamic image, preventing you from having to do that inside of every single page file. The 10th and final tip might blow your mind, so I wanted to save this one for last. You might have only used Next.js on the web, but what if I told you that you could build mobile-like experiences with Next.js? Max, who's the creator of Ionic, which is a framework allowing you to build native apps using web technologies, has also created this library called Capacitor.js, and it can do some pretty interesting things. So you can do things like hot module reloading with Next.js and still get a native-like experience with your app. So the example he has here is using Tailwind, and it looks really cool. I'm excited to see how this will progress and you know how close we can get to a native like experience. I think there's some pretty neat things here like modals and swipe to close, really long virtual lists, all kinds of really neat stuff. So check this out if you're interested in building native like experiences with Next.js. So that's it everyone. Hopefully you found these 10 tips helpful. Everything that I shown in the video will be linked in the description below. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks.